the sound of mud squish. Oh, that's, a, Ooh. I could see that going both ways. Love the, um, and walking on a mountain trail. Oh, love the sound of fire crackling. I hate when the fork hits the plate in such a way that it's loud and pitchy. It makes me cringe. Um, Mara, what about you? Cool. Um, I'm like, I'm like thinking of morning sounds. Uh, I'm like, I also want to say a sound I hate in the morning, which is, a sound of a garbage truck when you haven't slept. That's like a physical, physical bad feeling. Or birds really early in the morning can be bad, but birds in the afternoon. Beautiful. <laughs> We've got that in here too. Love birds chirping, hate sounds of people chewing with their mouth open. Nadine, I see you. Um, hate the sound of a spoon and an empty mug moving around. And... This is a... What about a dog licking a bowl that's empty? Ooh, love or hate? hate. No. <laughs> hate. Oh, that's cool. Sounds you don't hate. Um, I just, I guess, um, I just so appreciate, this is going to sound a little basic, but some things I'm going to say today might. Um, I go to like five different places, visually, physically, with every single one of these. You just like, I'm sent. Love hate sirens. Ooh, I love them. They're the same thing. That's kind of often how it goes in this life. Can I just say the things we love and the things we hate? No, is that too far out? Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. we... Sorry. That's okay. Should we? Um... Oh, wait. I'm like, wait, can let's you wait a couple. Back? Can you go? How do you go back? Just, um, is there no on your, on your on, Yes, there is on your keypad. Yeah. At the, at the back arrow, maybe. I am hitting the back arrow. No, there's gotta I can be stop, a way. share, and start over. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Love the sound of an egg frying. Hate the sound of clothes hangers scraping against the closet pole. Do you like, um, is there a way you avoid that? Or is it just like when it happens, you're just like, Ugh. feel free to chime in. Yeah, I just, I just sort of deal with it. <laughs> that's the way it is you know <laughs> complete um speaking chalk and chalk word classic but true tried true you know um oddly enough i love the sound of my radiators um when they're like cl clanking out it kind of wakes me up and i'm like oh i'm not alone and then that's kind of always that thing that makes me think like, is it a ghost? Oh no, that was my radiator. Yeah. Classic. Classics. Um, speaking of sounds, underneath me are my neighbors, clearly. Um, but there's, it's like the dog, where the dogs are. Like, I think where it's the where they, are. yeah. And so when they leave, they put the dog in this room and sometimes you just hear them like howling for their, for their mom. So if you hear a dog howl, that is what that is. That is a sound I hate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the sound of a typewriter feverishly clacking. Oh, thank you for the, thank you for the adverb. I'm a fan of adverbs. I was just having this chat with a friend recently who was like, adverbs, no thanks. And I'm like, really? No thanks. Yeah, to adverbs, no. Um, a bit weird. I like the sound of people uh, walking around in other, mm, I understand. Oh yes, Rain. I'm really loving the support of one another in our chat. Me too. <laughs> um, well, yeah, Jax, we can pass it over to you if there's anything you wanted to say or let folks know or anything before we kind of, we kick off. Yeah, uh, just that uh, if you have found your way here, you're in the absolute right place. I've uh, had so, so much fun listening to uh, Mara and, and Ari's uh, work, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited. So I hope um, everyone, uh, you, you know, gets, gets a little something out of this, and, and, um, and you know, it's always fun to participate, uh, and, and everyone's been doing a great job of that, so. Without further ado, Mara and Ari. I don't know if I'm gonna like jazz hands or like, <laughs> I'll turn off my <laughs> video and mute myself. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Jax. Thanks, Jax. Um, cool.
cool. Welcome. Welcome to our workshop. Um, yeah, we thought that maybe we would just start with a little, um, just to, before we intro ourselves and whatnot, to tell you what, what's going to happen um, while you're here today. So, um, and also just thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for um, bringing your energy. We know it's also morning energy, so we'll, we will be gentle. Um, and we hope for you to be gentle with yourself as well. Um, we're gonna introduce ourselves and like just, you know, kind of take you through like what we do, why we're here um, and, and, and about our work. Um, we're going to try to define what, what is this thing we are here to talk about? Uh, what are soundscapes? We have a lot of clips to play for you. Um, we want to share with you kind of our inspirations and where we're coming from when we're thinking about this stuff um, and uh, kind of the sounds and the soundscapes that make us sweaty, as we like to say. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, then we want to explore with you, like, what are the kinds of ways that you can nurture an environment for the world of the audio, for the audio world of your particular stories? Like, um, what are the different modes that we that we operate from that we we can offer offer to you? Um, and then we wanted to talk about methods of like concrete ways of creating soundscapes. Um, for yourself, like sound collection and, and different different modes of that as well. Um, this is interactive, we are interactive. Mara and I are gonna be interacting with each other the whole time. Um, we want you to interact with us. We highly encourage you to unmute, um, to chime in. We'll be like, hey, what do you think? And then, you know, please chime in. Of course, also the chat is fine as well. Um, but we really, really, this is not, this is a discussion um, more so than a, than a lecture. We, we hope. And um, we also encourage you to be wearing headphones just because there's a lot of things in stereo that happen in the clips that we are playing for you. And we want you to think about that in your audio workstations about the, the stereo element. So if you, if you wear headphones, you're just gonna get a lot more from what we present to you. But if you don't have them, it's chill. Um, Mara, did I, yeah, is there anything else? That's that's great. I feel like the, the one thing I was just thinking was like, I'm really excited to see the chat after this. And I want people to encourage people to like share if you're like inspired to think of another thing, like uh, find the link and put it in the chat. And it'll be cool for me later to go back and see what you guys were thinking as we were going through. Uh, we'll go to the next one here. Ah, okay. Who are we and why are we here? It's always a lighthearted way to start off a presentation. Uh, my name is Mara Laser. I didn't write this bio myself, but I, I, I loved it. I wrote it. <laughs> um, I also do want to take this moment to encourage you if you need to like step away and find headphones um, to do that. Um, this will, this will like feel a lot more interesting if it's like really in, the sounds are really in your brain. But I'm an audio producer, organizer, sometimes educator in New Orleans. Um, when I'm thinking of myself as an audio producer outside of like work, I like to think of how my Pisces self like actually influences that, which is like always feeling misunderstood, always feeling like it's like super complicated, always feeling like there's so many layers of emotions just like pounding me and I wanna like release that into the world. I love this about uh, resisting and altering reality. And like, thank you, Ari. <laughs> um. My name is Ari Mejia. Um, my full name is Ariel, but I also, I go by Ari. Um, I'm a Chicago native. I came to audio by way of um, community organizing and being a musician and being a writer. Uh, it felt like the melding of multiple worlds that drive me in, my, in this life. Um, yeah. There was more I wanted to say, but now as the caffeine's setting in, I'm a little, and I also reading these bios, I'm like, you know what? This is it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you ready? Um, oh, yeah. One more. I, I guess I, now I'm remembering. Um, I'm a freelancer and I've worked on an array of different projects. I've worked on fiction, I've worked on documentary, I've, I've report, I've, I've put what I call reporter drag and, um, 
I, I'm kind of most interested in, um, in, the, in the textures and, sa and the, sound, the world of sound as it pertains to audio storytelling. Sound design is something that, that really excites me. And um, yeah, so that's a little about me and why I do what I do. Um, we thought it was pertinent to mention the way that Mara and I came together and also our radio community because uh, in imagining and creating sound worlds, um, that's often a reflection of how we create um, our own worlds in our community and our friends and in particular around radio. I heard a little in the, um, as I was listening in in the, uh, oh my God, the intro. The kickoff. The kickoff. kickoff. <laughs> Thank you for the kickoff. <laughs> that how like insular and difficult it can feel to kind of crack into the world of media and, um, for us, um, meeting Phoebe Unter and, and Nicole Kelly. Um, well, and Mara and I had been friends. We, we had been friends for a little minute. We met through um, like organizing and friends in New Orleans. And then I had a, a mutual friend said, Mara does radio. And I was like, oh my God, I wanna do radio. And we just started to nurture each other. We made dates um, to make stuff and share stuff. We gave each other prompts. And that's also how we found Phoebe Unter and Nicole Kelly, who are the host, were the hosts of the last season of The Heart. And so as we're creating internal sonic worlds, uh, that's just something that is particular to how we nurture community as well within each other and in the radio, in the realm of radio. Um, yeah, I want to pass it to Mara. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, I think when I think about the making work with the rejects too, it, I, I think about how often in radio making things for other people feels like I'm trying to do something for someone else and I'm, I'm making a lot of guesses and it feels really unsure but there's something different when you're I'm making work for my friends where it feels like it's like way more direct it's way more interesting I'm way more um, I'm way more interested in like sharing my whole self when I'm making it for people I know um, and also freelance deadlines of giving ourselves deadlines to like make that kind of work is extremely helpful for me. Totally. Also real quick, didn't even say this, the name of our collective is the Radio Rejects. Um, that's, that's what we named ourselves after we all got reject, rejected from the same residency. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. We were, when we were cooking up this, workshop, you know, uh, we're, we're like, wow, how do we boil this down? What is this? Uh, what is the soundscape? And we riffed on a lot of different things. And, um, but we were like, what is it? And it's kind of the most basic, purest form we can think of. And um, we kind of believe that it's anything you hear in a radio story, in an audio, in an, in an, in an audio experience that is addition in addition to narration. Um, and even then, you know, when Mara, Mara said that, and I was like, but voice is also part of the soundscape. So, right, um, and actually an example that I'm gonna share definitely illustrates that, but um, it's kind of just the world outside of the Vox, right, of the, of the tracking, right? It's, 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 it's like how we try, try to just begin. Um, but again, this is subjective, which kind of gets to the next point. Um, that Mara said to subjective sound designing. If you wanna speak a little bit more to that, Mara. Um, yeah, I guess I just like to think of a soundscape as like an addition to like filler music or like just plugging in anything you found from free library, even though free library can be your soundscape, but it, I like to think of a soundscape as, yeah, just like what you're saying, intentionally creating your world. Like, what are you looking at? What does it sound like um, is, Totally. Also, I do want to, if people are like, oh, this is what soundscape means to me, or I, I've heard a definition that I like, or this is what I'm thinking of, like shared in the chat. I don't know if you guys are doing that, but I just want to encourage that. Definitely. Yeah. Also like, and I, I'm going to say this earlier and I'll probably come back to this, but Mara and I are like thinking about what we're giving That's you today is, so cool. oh, can you hear me? Are we good? Okay. Um, kind of thinking about like, this is these are like ideas and sounds as like a buffet for you. And if it's like you had this, you had different ideas or if this isn't resonating, that's totally like, okay, because this is just the way that we think about it. And maybe it'll invite, we just, this is an invitation. 
um, to think about how you build the world within your story. And, you know, clearly in particular that sonic world. Yeah, yeah you are the expert. You are the expert. Okay. Also, so when you we were thinking about this, I was like, soundscape. Okay, obviously sound, that's like, we were familiar with that, but I was like, what does, what is this scape? Like, what is that landscape? What, what does that mean? Um, and it turns out it, it like, it has, it has a couple meanings. So all of these things are, are scapes. The, the first segment of an antenna from an insect is a scape, the like flowerless stalk uh, from the root to a flower is escape. The shaft of a column is escape. This like pokey part of a feather that I don't remember the name of is is a, is escape. Um, so that really got me thinking. Like a soundscape is about the relationship between sounds. So like is exactly like Ari was saying, your voice can be a soundscape if it's like. In a relationship with itself your voice can be a soundscape if it like makes you think of anything else um I, we were it, and i think we thinking about this too we thought a lot about like visualizing what a soundscape is i think this helps me like think of how you're building and creating a, a world i love this i loved this and i clearly love this slide and i like the relationship between the things and like we were saying this yesterday too like above or below right like where does the sound live like kind of physically in in your in your workstation in your ears um words in relation to the sounds the sounds in relation to each other thinking about all these elements um is part of that building yeah um, okay um so this is just like a moment to encourage you to think of like if you're working on a project if you want to be working on a project like we're all thinking about different things like it might be a documentary it might be a reported thing it might be an education story it might be a deeply personal story about your family and your brother like what are you looking at and how can you build what it sounds like yeah this also like and gets into the way i mean in some way, we're all kind of conceptualizing our own tape, like how we see it, right? Like there is a seeing in this as a listening. Um, you know, I often think of sewing. I always think of like, how am I sewing these things together? I know it's probably like a common, like an audio motif, but that like the way that I, I can visualize it um, brings me further inside it. And that this is all, scape also, it means view, relationship of what you're looking at. Okay. So it's like, why? Um, do I need one of these? Do I want one of these? What is this? Um, <laughs> Phoebe. Um, and so this was actually, it was really cool. We were just riffing like how, like, again, breaking this down, like, what would you want? What, how do these function inside your audio piece? And, um, Mara threw these out there and I really, really loved them um, to kind of break down what soundscapes can do and, 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 and what they can function as inside your audio piece. They, they, add, they can add emotion um, and tone, which also goes into meaning. So the last bullet point, um, setting in place, literally like being in scene as audio heads like to say, um, <laughs> movement between scenes. So the way that kind of, I feel like um, uh, maybe a more traditional, like the way that people use tracking uh, to move from one, one to connect dots, the sound is, can be used in that way and how. Um, texture, and this really, this goes is deep, something that, like I said, really moves me about this stuff. Um, the layers and the elements therein um, to think about how sound, how the how a soundscape can fill a space with with tech with texture specifically. Oh no, somebody can't see the slides. Can any can others see the slides? Okay. We good. We good. Yep. Okay. Great. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah if you can't see them, uh, there's like a view options button. Um, so like sometimes if you click that and you click fit, make sure it's on fit to window for the screen share. Thanks, so, Jax. That's a good one. Um, Mara, am I missing anything here? What, tell me, tell me what, that was, yeah. yeah. That was great. Okay. So um, in those five, uh, those five, or was it six? Well, we, we kind of, we combined me meaning and emotion similarly, um, like we felt like they were in conversation. So we have some examples we want to play. Um, these clips range from like one minute to five. I think what one of the, this one is, is a, just a clip of Ariana Martinez's piece called Night Rider. Um, and so, yeah, we chose pieces that we think kind of speak, uh, clips that will speak to each of these. But again, like we said, subjective, there's clearly overlap, um, but we wanted to just give a little taste of each and to think about, hopefully inspire. And I, um, so yeah, this is Ariana Martinez. Ariana Martinez is a New York based audio producer and artist and also a visual artist. Um, highly recommend checking out their work if, um, if you haven't heard of them. They're wonderful. And Mara, you can go ahead and uh, play this clip. Um, we do want to like talk with you about what you hear. Again, chat, chat it out, um, thinking about layers and also thinking about like, if you if you were making this, like like the intention behind their choices, curious your thoughts too, what you think those might be. Go ahead, Mara. I've always disliked wide expanses of space. As a child, my family moved frequently, and I learned quickly the art of packing a cardboard box, of squeezing into our car's back seat, which I shared with pieces of our linens and duffel bags of our clothes. These things eventually became routine, but I could never shake the terrifying alien sensation that would come once the sun set over the highway and the already empty space became completely illegible. Locked inside the shuttle of our car, I might as well have been an astronaut, floating through space, watching for comets. The headlights of the rare car that would occasionally join us on the highway. Did it just stop? Uh-oh. Mara, can you hear? Hello? <laughs> oh no um mara can you hear uh-oh am i glitching too i'm okay no, you're you're okay all right um let me <laughs> mara can try like maybe logging off and rejoining the room sometimes that's worked for me Sitting right next to the router. <laughs> Just. I know. One second. Also, let me. Are they still glitching? Okay, one second. Um, maybe I can override. Um, one second. Yeah, Sorry, y'all. Hang tight. That that the vocal um, uh, distortion was the real soundscape there. So. <laughs> Um, okay, well, well, I, we all hate. <laughs> well, I'm pulling up and really we were going to play probably like just another minute or so of that piece. So, um, 
but yeah, does anyone want to jump in or say anything before I go kind of blabbing on about my thoughts about it? Did anyone have, what were your responses to that? Um, I was definitely noticing that um, the her, her voice actually like really became part of the soundscape um, because of the way she sort of mimicked the like instrumentation, um, like the viol. I think it was like violins or like strings, which was really cool. Totally, absolutely. I heard the sunrise. Yes. Oh, oh the tempo of all the sounds are really play setting. Yeah, so slow and lonely. I love the passing cars had a, and, and I think because I compressed this into an mp3 or like the way that it got compressed like you couldn't hear the panning but they really like the cars go by your face like hardcore and so you just are really really set inside the car with them um yeah I also think like I was talking when I was talking to Mara about this and riffing on this piece like the, um, you know, they could be saying the same things, but like if the violins had like more staccato and a little bit more like um, tension, we would be feeling and situated quite differently than if we, um, you know, it, 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 if that had been different. And so I think like the car, the cars, the car, the violin and their voice like created was like this really, like wonderful cocktail <laughs> that uh, that put us right there with them, physically and emotionally. Um, so that's kind of, again the, emotion, the crossover, but really good example of place. We thought, um, yeah, yeah, Gabrielle, same, exactly. I felt like the world so nicely subtle. Totally, it was just so there was like a a real gentleness um, and like you know made me think like they were used to this, right? They say like packing up a box was something I could do. And so like, I often think like, what does that sound like when I'm, when I'm creating soundscapes? Like, what does it sound like to feel comfortable doing something that's you like, that, that is difficult, but for me, no, not so much. Um, Mara, are you here? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Okay, um, cool. Very soothing, but not like put you to sleep, more like a wave of calm and tenderness, totally. And I also like being a child and feeling safe, like all the things while also like in the inky expanse, like in this unknowingness, like it all just like, there's so much setting to that. Mara, you said some really good things about this yesterday, but I just wanna know if there's anything that we hadn't mentioned yet about. I trust wherever y'all just went. <laughs> cool, okay. so, so the, yeah. Thank you. I know. I mean, their writing is spectacular. Um, definitely check them out. They, the, all their work is 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 website, and maybe we could, you know, Jacks find a way to link. Maybe we could link to the work in this um, in our presentation. But cool. All right. I think we can go to Ready? the next bullet point. Yeah. Or can we? Okay. Go ahead, Mara. Um, okay, so the this piece here is called Phoenix's Last Song. It's by Sami Alanani. And for this piece that is extremely beautiful, we want you to think about movement. Um, and so before I say too much about what this is, I want you to think about, um, I'll play a piece part of it and just think about how sometimes you can use sound to just take you from one scene and the sound doesn't really affect what you're saying it takes you to the next scene even if it's even if it's beautiful so let's just listen here
okay. He can imagine the narrator coming in and telling us, like, thank you for listening live. Um, but the next piece, Ari and I heard the um, composer talking about creating this work and wanting to evoke the sound of the phoenix. Yeah. And Oh, yeah, sorry. Please, please, please. I would love to because I was quite shook. Um, so by, <laughs> by this presentation that was um, so last year, if any folks are familiar with the Third Coast International Audio Festival, um, we uh, they, they were virtual last year. And so um, Mara and I went to this workshop and I think Phoebe might have been there too, um, where um, Axel Kakutier, which is a London-based audio producer, wonderful and brilliant human, recommend his work too, was in conversation with Sami Alanani, who's a composer and a producer. Um, I'm pretty sure he makes scores for film. But um, talking about in this piece, thinking like, what is the sound of the phoenix's wings? And he showed us his workstation. It was really just like three tracks. Like it was not that wild, honestly. Uh, but like thinking about how to create that movement and I was just so rattled <laughs> because it really was quite, it's, it's beautiful and the intention behind it is very exciting to me. And I just think thinking about conceptually about sound in this way is like, this is, this is world building. Um, so we wanted to play uh, this for you and also uh, highly recommend listening to the whole thing for sure. Okay, so let's listen to another piece and, and you'll hear, um some words and just they, it's like wild to think now about the interaction between the words and the sound. Out of paradise she flew, her final flight into the land of men with eyes that witnessed otherwise a vision unobscured. Her long neck tilted backwards, her feathers sweet with moisture. Warmed by the rising sun, she looks down, opens her beak. The phoenix sings. And oh, cliffhanger. Uh, I'm glad that we already got ch chiming in. Please like shout out kind of what ha what's happening for you right now in your body, in your in your mind's eye. Um, holy cow, those chimes. The musical contrast between the heaviness and lightness definitely sounding like flapping. Cool. Yeah, what else is coming up for you? Oh. <laughs> You ready? Sure. Uh, the super low tones you hear in the song were really Yeah, you want to share out what people are saying. Yeah, I like I the music that forms the tone of voice. I agree. I, 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 um, I felt like that the voice and like the slight, I don't even know, um, what, what do you think that gentle effect is? Just like the most tiny touch of reverb. Um, I'm like in the air. <laughs> I'm in the air. I'm on like some red golden wings, lots of gilded and <laughs> totally um, very thorough. It reminded me of watching a nature show. It felt like we were watching the phoenix in its habitat. I could meditate to this. Absolutely. I'm just like, these are the different, these, the, I'm just, yeah, I feel like utterly inspired by a sound design like this, that truly it's like not the most wild, intricate thing. Like this isn't that crazy. It's just really intentional. Um, the fact the narrator has a British accent makes me feel like a fairy tale. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I like that there's a little gap between the bird, the phoenix opens its beak and then you don't hear much at all. And then like, there's like that space there. So that's what stood out to me. Ooh, I like that. I like, I like that, what you noticed. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm clearly having a good time. Um, okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's move to the next. 
must, okay. Texture queen. <laughs> so um, the next piece we're gonna play is something that I made. So we mentioned earlier how us and our, and our two radio comrades, uh, Phoebe and NK, we all got rejected from the same residency. And we said, you know what, let's just make our own residency. Um, and so we went out to the woods in California together for like a long weekend. Um, and, and we all live in different parts of the country too, uh, should mention that. So we would beat up, we met up. And, um, and we had this incredible weekend where uh, we spent the first like full day just like playing stuff for each other, playing stuff for each other, like what we're doing right now, playing and talking. And then the next few days we made things, we worked on our own projects, we would share, we would like fuck around together, like in the workstations, like it just, we like went ham and went hard. And this piece I made there. And again, like Mar said, I didn't make this for anything in particular other than to experiment and grow. And, um, and I played this for them. Since then, I think I am, it, it was in the bar in the, the sound room that in that Barbican. It wasn't basically what I'm saying is I didn't make this <laughs> for, for radio play. And I do we do really, really want to encourage that when you're experimenting with this stuff, course time and whatever. But um yeah, so I'm gonna play this and this is quite multi-layered. Um and I I do I I'm curious what you know what's coming up as you think about, well, what's inside this, you know, when you take, like taking a bite and wondering what are the ingredients? Um, yeah. Uh, oh, a little context. Yeah. Yeah. So I have been carrying around this, this letter that I had written to a, um, a lover 15 years ago, 18 years ago. Um, the way that I came up into this, having this letter that I had written them was, um, because it was, I had like found a book that had this in it. So like, basically I just feel like there's a particular view. This, I was like, when do you get to see a love letter that you wrote someone else? That usually is something you don't really get returned to you. Um, so I was just like having this particular window into like a very old self. And I, I was thinking about like, how, how can I sonically represent that? That looking and the feeling that I was having into that, into my, into myself and in through this letter. And so that's what this piece is. I'm getting ready to burn some paper. January 4th, 2005. That I found squashed into a book on an old shelf in an apartment I used to live in. It's a bit strange to be writing you now. Well, just yesterday, I was holding on to the tiger's head of me, gripping your skin in between my fingers and the nails and Ready to burn. I'm getting 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 ready to burn. I'm trying so hard to stay optimistic over here. I found an old letter that turned to glass as I read it. Why am I not wrapped up in your limbs or sneezing in your face or drenching your lips in my saliva? Thick Coke bottle glass. I could see through the glass, but I couldn't make out shapes on the other side. Just being away from me with a black on my left arm, my eyes, my teeth. There's shapes in the memory. Only Thank you for listening. So cool. <laughs> Um, before I, 
clearly can go on. I'm curious, any, you know, th any thoughts people want to share about what they, about what happened inside them as they heard that? People talking in the chat. No, but okay. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, Jesse says, "Love how many glassy sounds we hear before you get to the part of the text, and how all of a sudden change to those lines." Yeah, I love the combination too of like piercing sound and calming sounds, and like thinking of glass as like, "Oh, I can see through it," and then it's like the glass is shattered. <laughs> it's just like I have no High drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, looking at something you wrote forever ago. Yeah, it's like, and that's kind of how I, I was like, I, you know, it felt like looking through water glass, you know, like, and, and how memories and dreams are like that a little bit. You're like, I can't see, but I see shapes. Um, looking at the chat, uh, I was really struck by the contrast in organic sounds and, me and mechanical sounds. That's really, that's interesting you say that too, because yesterday I was thinking, talking about that too, like there's like fab um, sounds of like, forged things and then I had used a lot of sound that I collected in the woods um and like layers lots of layers the opening was bright things would wake up um afterwards began the initial sound transformed into fire setting so that's a this oh, is gonna be you. this is gonna be less specific um but I know Curtis Mayfield this musician has this thing where she's like oh like you know, you can't rate a song out of like one to 10. It's like either has liftoff or doesn't have liftoff. And mm. liftoff is like when you're, you know, just going about your day and then you hear a piece of music or something and you're just all of a sudden it like happens instantly and you're like in a different place or like headspace. And and yeah, that I, I think that like some, some point like halfway through that piece, like that clicked for me. Cool. Yeah. Ah. That feels like I, I won. <laughs> that was that's a success, you know. Yeah. Also, that reminds me of the song "Get Lifted." That I, I've it's such a cool <laughs> feeling. Um, I just like there's just I you know exactly like crunching like metal like I thought like two spoons clanking together was the metal. Um, you know, like I just really wanted I was like just layering a lot a lot of sound as texture for this because it just honestly it turned me on I was like the lights were on for me while I was making this and that's why I did it we can go to the next one okay all right <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay <laughs> um so meaning and emotion. Um, this piece is um, by Bitchface, which is Phoebe and NK, part of the little rejects group that we talked about. It's called Heavy Girls of Heavy Music. Um, that feeling of like getting lifted, I definitely had that when I listened to this piece and I was trying to think of like, okay, why did I have that? Like what happened in my body? And it was like this really cool combination of meaning and emotion. Um, so I want to play some of this, but I'm trying to like set, set the scene for you before we just drop you in. Um, so this piece is, it has like a lot of sound design happening and where we'll start, it's like someone's radio show and they're talking about, um, an event that happened in 1979. Correct me if um, Phoebe, if I'm wrong. I know, I kind of want to invite yeah, Phoebe if Phoebe wants to say anything and, and maybe later if you would, we're interested in Phoebe. Um, also just like a slightly, slightly, just slightly bit more context. Bitchface was um, Nicole Kelly and Phoebe Hunter's podcast um, before they became the hosts of The Heart uh, and yeah. kind of like the ethos around it was and is like um like a it was like, it was experimentation thank you <laughs> it was gather the tape and then the tape dictates the form of the final piece and so we gathered the tape to make this like over many like I think over like two years 
and kind of stitched it together and like the the form came up later like the radio show format but we were also really inspired by the music that I think you might be playing in this piece but um the music of the band fuck you pay us yeah, thank you I, baby. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for including this well we're, this is I mean bitch face is quite inspiring to us and I think like um you know Liza who's also here is doing um a talk I think tomorrow about like making audio your own and that's something that's really really kind of um that's what drives us in our work as well oh it's today great so um yeah like something that we that's uh, something we hold dear and when we heard bitch face for the first time we were like where are these people so go for it I know, I found them. um okay so I'm gonna try and go two minutes in. So you're hearing, you'll hear some of like radio show and then you'll hear like where to sort of get carried away. And as you're, um, as you're listening, you can do what the slide tells you. Think about these questions here in the chat and, we'll, and then we'll, we'll talk. Ah, disappeared. Threatening. Have you seen the videos? I have seen the videos. And y'all can look this up too. So when you watch the whole thing now, it's like deja vu. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, oh, this is familiar. We've seen this so-called crisis of masculinity before. You will not replace us! You will... Ah! Okay. I'll just say, this, they're, they're talking about a um, disco burning event at uh, Comiskey Park in Chicago. So that this is like, this is what they're talking about at the show as we're, as we're dropped into this moment. Saying? Yeah. It's like, oh, this is familiar. We've seen this so-called crisis of masculinity. You will not replace us. You will not replace us. You will not replace us. intimidating lifestyle, it's an intimidating culture, and at some point, there it was being forced down our throats. I hated disco. It was the bane of our existence. Almost seemed like an assault and what we grew up on, which is rock and roll. It's bullcrap that these white dudes even thought rock music belonged to them in the first place. Actually, Rock music has been black and femme as fuck since the beginning. Today's show is about the inherent blackness of American music. Here to defend that legacy is all femme Afropunk band, Fuck You, Pay Us. You're hearing their song, Burn Ye Old White Male Patriarchy Burn. And here's their lead singer, Jasmine Yende. It's about us for having the space to be loud, to create, and to get paid. But when we're doing it for the community, it's really about all of us, you know? Destroy! 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 We say Black Femmes to the front because we love seeing Black Femmes in the front fucking fuck with us. Like, you know, like, we want to make sure they have a safe space to mosh. We want to make sure they can see. Destroy! 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 And when the mosh pit has Femmes, people of color, when black films are centered up front and like, like do whatever you want like you don't have to be in it you can watch you can be like when the when it's like a more respectful mosh pit it's so beautiful destroy, 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 destroy. during one mosh pit like we were in a garden and everybody was taking their tops off
Should I talk? <laughs> yeah, I, I can too. Um, I just think like, especially, I put it in, said it in the chat, but just the way that these sound, the sound bites or the, 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 the sound that they chose, like when thinking about, you know, initially we were saying like over and under, right? Or like the scape, like how is the column in relation to the other parts of it, a garlic scape, right? I just feel like there's so that like hyper intentionality between the pieces in here um, and how they're talking to each other, especially like from Disco Demolition. So yeah, like the Disco Demolition that happened at Comiskey Park in Chicago where they burned like tons and tons and tons of records. They talk a little bit like, actually this was like a, like this was a racist happening. Like, I mean, this was like um, anti-black, right? And so, and then the lead in into the tape from Charlottesville, is that right? And then, ah, oh, I just, yeah. yeah. Go we, for got, it. we got so ex excited about mixing those because again we made it over time and I think that Charlottesville happened in that period and like when we went back and were able to listen to those clips of Comiskey we I just like kept hearing you will not replace you know like it and so we we like tried that out a bunch to to make that happen and it's cool it's cool to hear you play it thank you <laughs> oh yeah thank I mean for making it and um, just kind of like checking in on the chat. Yeah, in, interwoven and a hearing anger, suspense and danger. Um, power just resonated through the whole piece, both different sounds lying power and the combination of the sounds exuding power. Exactly. This was like quite on the nose for us with um, meaning and emotion um, in those respects. Yeah, definitely, of course. Also, um, you can find um, if a few you to drop in the chat just the link to all of bitch face to bitch face's feed um i really appreciate bitch face too because there is the, their form the form is consistently experimental you might hear one piece that's narrative you might hear another that's chat you might hear another one that's um like just like this like deeply sound soundscaped yeah um to anyone else also just i don't know any questions or anything that came up and yeah Anything else that people want to speak to before we move to the next slide? I just thought it was really badass and I really <laughs> want to hear people sing. And it reminded me, like it didn't, at first when I heard people screaming, you know, you will not replace us, more modern memories came to mind. So for a second, I didn't realize where in time we were, um, which is upsetting, <laughs> but also, you know, it just shows how history repeats itself. And um, yeah, no, it was just, I mean, I just was thoroughly, I would have listened, I could listen to that for, for a long time. It was great. Totally. I think that also just to throw in there, this is, I should have put this in my bio, but I find that audio is like a, a, a mode of, of time travel. And um, I think Phoebe and NK really drove something home with that. And you really spoke to it. Phoebe, I hope you're pleased. <laughs> Because that's the that's the scary reality of this stuff, um, and how they illustrated that in this audio piece was really really um, apt. Yeah, Mara, did you want to say anything or oh, that was great? Okay, I think one thing about scapes that I get unsure about is when do you know it's when do you know it's too much? Just bookmarking it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean that's the thing. You don't. <laughs> um, you don't, and I, I or, or I'll say, I'll speak for myself, <laughs> lol, never. Um, that's part of like our collective, that's why we are like being, being, um, talking about, and again, like, you know, you work on a project, you've got an editor, you know, you've got somebody who's bouncing, hopefully story doodling your work with you, but what we do is play things for each other a lot and nurturing each other that too much energy, um, to be, to, to be like, what's happening here and is that happening for me what's happening for you what's happening for me what's happening for you so I would say play it for people I'll you know and you can always play it for me I don't know you but you can send me anything and I will listen and tell you that it's yeah. not too much <laughs> ready yeah okay so we thought we would play a little bit more um um <laughs> was I? <laughs> That's funny. Um, I think like, so we just wanted to play, uh, so this is where we, we both want to play clips from our own work. Um, and you heard a little bit of mine, but um, 
more specifics to how these overlap, the, 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 some overlap in like the soup of what we think makes a soundscape, um, meaning intentions, um, setting, place. Um, so there's, Mara and I made um, a uh, mini series, a mini mini series for the heart uh, called E for E, Embodied for Embodied. And we're both, uh, the two clips that I'm gonna play for you here are um, two particular soundscapes. They're very different and they're doing different things. Um, from from that piece uh and the first one i'm going to play let's play the maybe the intro first mara let's sure. do that one first and um okay so like disclaimer i'm talking about sex if that is too much please maybe step away or like just whatever i'm talking about sex in both of them this piece was about embodied for embodied was about being in how we experience being in our bodies or not being in them and learning that and and um so yeah I think that's all I'll say about about my intro but thinking about again the same questions and in this I think particularly voice was something I wanted to be using as part of my soundscape dear goddess dear god dear universe dear earth dear flesh dear flesh dear holiest of hearts dear past dear future dear now dear circles dear endless waters dear black earth dear green leaves dear atoms and particles and ions and matter in the faith i grew up in there is a ritual an acknowledgement a way to create meaning and tradition for what feels like everything that we do Prayers are made that infuse the objects. The prayer brings that thing into being beyond its physical form. Take me. Everything is symbolic, making everything more than a thing. Into my own center, into the center of my body, into the place in my body where I can feel, where I can feel. And we say prayers where I let myself and feel thanks to those symbols to feel and things where I can feel myself, where I feel my body where I am let into the place in whole now me I don't necessarily always observe this faith but I do find it dear and kindred to create rituals for things so I want to say a prayer to the object that brought this audio story into being. It is an object of very particular meaning and weight in my life. So much that it inspired this whole story. It is a particular object of desire from my past that is resurrected today for the experience I've had of making this story and the experience you will have of listening. But really, it's not just today. It's always with me and it is a prayer, a prayer to, 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 a purple, very average sized, shiny dildo. We can begin. Follow, follow me, follow me. Thank you for listening. <laughs> so good. So I, this feels like you're sharing a secret. Ooh, well. Yes. <laughs> and I, um, you know, I really struggle with the intro to this piece because it is quite linear after this. It goes through like, you know, like takes me through, takes you through a little journey. Um, but because I'm talking about this like object as kind of like a spiritual, like a spiritual connection 
I'm like, how can I, what is my sonic ritual? Um, and like with myself and like, what does it feel like to be in my head when I'm like, you know, kind of just like, what, what are the layers inside that? And so, and how voice, I mean, that's the thing, like, yes, there's a, so, so even, so even we've got like the tracking of like, I'm talking directly to the listener. I'm, there's like exposition, but meanwhile, you're hearing myself, you're here, you're still inside my head. Um, that's what I was going for. Yeah. I don't know. Anyone jump in, Mara, anybody, if you want, if you'd like. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I liked what you said the other day about how you, like you were struggling. You're like, I don't know how to start this piece. And then you talk to other people about it. Right. And then James asked you. Yeah. James T. Green, if anyone's familiar, um, not familiar with him, definitely check out his work. He's an artist, producer. Um, he works at Transmitter and creates audio like he's drinking water. <laughs> he's, he's very prolific. And um, yeah, I was just, I was talking to him and, and just, he's like, what if you made a prayer? And it just like went from there. And of course, because I'm obsessed with the layers and the texture of it. I was like, what is that texture texturally? Um, and kind of just, and James is fantastic. Uh, and just to kind of come back to what we've been saying is like, talk to your people, talk, talk to, talk to anyone, like creating, creating your, your community world that nurtures your sonic one is paramount. I, I would say. Um, this next clip is from the same piece. And this is only, this is like 20 seconds or so. And uh, this was, this is from, this is like for movement and feeling, um, like, what does it sound like when my, when I leave my body? Go ahead and play it. It's not playing. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> when having sex, it was like, I was part alive, part ghost. And those two parts of myself were in conversation with each other, not with the person I was having sex with. Ghost. And it goes on like, then I'm like, start talking with myself. Like, so there's, there's, there's like three Aries in this scene um, that, that goes on, um, but just, and you know, and again, literally I'm like wind, waves. Um, like I actually visualized, I visualized like a, like a gray dark space. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen a ghost, but I feel like I have, and it's been in like, the, in like a figure form of like a shadow. And so I'm like, what do shadows sound like? Uh, yeah. We can move on. Yeah. I was just thinking, I love that piece the first time you said ghost and it feel like it like hits me. I'm like, whoa, which to me, I'm like, ah, uh, ghost. <laughs> oh, this slide. Okay. Um, so I'm like, how are we doing for time? Is that like what, 20? Yeah, how are we? I'm like, maybe I'll play one and then if we need to play more, I'll, I'll go back. Um, so I'm like, this piece is called Mardi Gras is a state of mind. I- Mara won an award for it. So. Just wanted to shout that out. Uh, thank you. Uh, this also, I, I feel like relevant. because I made this for um, Rejects. Like I made it for the, our first cabin meeting, which was, I like wanted to impress these people really bad. Um, but it's about um, Mardi Gras, believe it or not, and gender transition. And I was really, I really like thinking of like, how can I explain the feeling that I'm feeling right now? And like, where does that take me? And versus like, this is where I want people to land at the end. I'm like, I don't know where it ends. Like, it's still, it's still my life. It's still me. It's still happening. So like, what how can I add all these layers so people are like feeling some version of what I'm feeling as as it's going so let's um as we're listening 
let's try and think about uh, what are the layers of sound and where do they come from? Um, one, two, or three. Two, let's try, two, let's try, two, let's go with two. Fat Tuesday is a day for ritually drug-induced shape-shifting. In New Orleans, this is the culmination day for Catholic feasting, for public masking, costuming, nudity, young and old bodies are on full display. I won't even call it gender bending because it's beyond the category of gender. It's a riot bursting with sounds and deep, bright, shiny colors. Historic struggles over who is allowed to parade, who owns the streets, happens live on TV simultaneously to the news coverage of drag competitions. The strike didn't stop the annual drag contest in the quarter. This year, the usual feather boas and frills gave way partially to the macho man leather look with many sporting construction hats. Spectators and participants alike, they well, they jam bourbon trees, what they did for blocks. On this day, the gift of androgel was supposed to be placed in our hands. If you are currently out of work due to health-related issues and between the ages of 50 and 64, you may qualify for... Dis- Thank you for completing the survey. Your entry is now complete. What? Goodbye. Oh, my God. This <laughs> is the number they have listed on their website. But as the patriarchal bureaucratic garbage world that we live in would have it... Um, yeah, let me think about it. So this, this was like, we're supposed to get testosterone on Mardi Gras day. So I was thinking about like, what is Mardi Gras? What does Mardi Gras feel like? Um, and it feels like drugs. So I wanted, what are the layers of sound? So, um, I wasn't at Mardi Gras that year. So some of what I did was just like go on YouTube and find sounds of Mardi Gras bands. So that like, that takes you to the place. And then I wanted to like, I stretched some of the like yelling out. So it it felt like ethereal. There's that, um, a video of actual news coverage from, it's from 1979 talking about um, a macho man leather look. It's also on YouTube. It's really funny to see like the news talking about um, drag shows from the seventies. You also, heard me I we were all in New York together actually and um I I people talked a lot about recording your life to get inspiration from from it and to use it um in work but I was like oh god it's like it's kind of awkward I don't want to be like carrying around recorder but this weekend I just was doing it and I just recorded myself on my phone and I think it's, it's, it's cool. You can hear the actual like response that we have in real time. So we've got a question for you. Yeah, please. What was the more hollow sound? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> and then love the newscaster clip. Yeah, so good. Um, I'm not sure what the more hollow, was it like oh, that? <laughs> Cause that was, if it was that, that was like people screaming that I just like pulled down in time. Like maybe the drums, longer. before the drums come in. Before? Yeah, it sounds like maybe you, st- it was that when you pulled apart maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just also just want to call out your writing and how fantastic mm-hmm. it is in this piece and how like it's like, very integral to the world that you build for us in here you know like beyond gender and just naming it and how you how you articulate it like alive in the sound in a in a different way it, it does for me thank you yeah I think we've got is it like do we have um, 10 minutes we, left we have ten, 10 minutes uh, 20 minutes till the next thing so we can go over a little bit but then I'll do like I'll, I'll basically say what's going on next and and all that. But this is this is excellent. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, maybe we do. We want to pl- play the like the video and then maybe or do we want to do a? Q- I know. What do you want to talk? Do we want to do like talking or Q and A or do you guys want us to keep going? We've got a couple more slides. Um. Oh, we also we have the yeah. recording. We have the interactive part. 
maybe we'll just we'll send you on a personal mission afterwards yeah we can give you some homework (laughs) so the the next time you to think about how you can capture sounds in your own space and world and like what Mara just said I'm really glad you said that Mara like you know I teach youth radio and I feel like as I've learned to be a, a radio educator um like the idea of like record everything like keep your recorders on or like record your world or like document your world and also being like a, a history lover and an arch- and like my own personal archivist and I feel like Phoebe has taught me a lot about that too about like being your own archivist like how can how how can and as as audio lovers I take it like how can you be creating your own like li- library archive and sound of your of your life and yourself um tangibly your life but also like just like your commute, if you have one, I know we don't really have one right now, but just like the little things when you're making your coffee, like the little things that create your your own world um, are really important, just as important as anything else. And those are things you can use in your um, in your audio work. What editing programs do you normally use? Um, I use Reaper and recently um, have started with using Pro Tools, but that is not a constant. I, I'm, I'm a Reaper head, Reaper for life, baby. And Mara, Mara uses a couple. You've used Hindenburg too, right? I've used Hindenburg. I'm using it now because I have to for a job, but um, Reaper also has so many free, it's free in general. Then there's a million tutorials. If you want to Google, like, how do I stretch sound and make it go backwards? You can, you know, YouTube, all that stuff, which is cool. I've used Audition for work too. Um, you can make Reaper do all those things if you Google like audition does this thing also and also just like I just want to also shout out like GarageBand for making oh yeah for composing and um like like putting bringing something from the sounds that are the um like the applications inside there um I know Mara's used before and I want to use more of and did a little bit our weekend in Idlewild. Um, that's in the woods when we did our own residency. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you're if you're coming from a zero music background, like, what do you recommend for like when you first start dipping your toes into creating like music or or sounds your, yourself? Uh, well, I I think GarageBand is a great um, segue, or any alternative to GarageBand that is like you can play one note and copy and paste that one note and that one note and you can like add an effect to that one note or then you can add a second note. I feel like starting there and seeing how it sounds and and tweaking it a little bit and being less obsessed with like, this has to sound like I have to recreate this thing that I I have, but more like um, enjoying the playfulness of of the limitations, I guess is what I would say. I would also add like for me having like z- zero like electronic music stuff at all like yeah I like I I play instruments but um in in the workstation like I've gone to freesound.org and I'll get like I'll get like a dub beat and then I'll get like a riff and then I'll get like I'll just like get random things and just like like Mar said like experiments and see the vibe and see how it feels but like there's so many there's so much stuff out there and also like the sound like Use your mouth, yes. put an effect on it. <laughs> what would we be without free sound? Exactly. Um, it's, it's same, Phoebe. Same. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a composer. Like that's kind of the thing about the Phoenix Wings. That guy is a composer. He created those the little, it, the the few tracks that he had in there for these wings. He had made himself. That said, though, like compiling sounds and layering them and adding effects and, and plugins to them in your workstation um is kind of how you can how you can just begin uh, and you'll you'll be surprised at at what you can um what you come up with uh cool to we how long is this time. yeah we maybe we should just we can stop yeah. and um and go uh we can just but but we'll link to this but this is this was um kind of uh, maybe you want to talk about it Mara because you selected it, but it's a great video well I think this is fitting for um if you're not a composer like what do you sound what does that mean so this this person their whole thing on youtube well they are a composer they can make 
sounds with like really cool digital things that like I don't even know what they are but they also just record sounds in really interesting creative ways um which is here just like you know dumping cereal on someone's head and recording the sound like all the way as it trickles down this person's body and then lands on the floor and it is way more interesting than um than you would think it would be so I, I think yeah that's just again like listening actively listening allowing it to like complete thinking of the arc of the sound playing with rhythm layers uh yeah i just want to answer miriam's question yeah what's happening um, is there a is, is there any special way you store the sounds you create online locally um i have a folder on my hard drive um I, I, and i have like i'm not as organized like i know people that have like I think Phoebe is someone that has like started their own little sound library, um, but you, you know, just kind of starting your own and, and, and like on a hard drive desktop. But of course, if you're a Dropbox user, I don't know, like one of these places is where is, is all I do with it. Nothing too fancy, really. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Maybe. Um... <laughs> yeah. Um, Mar, if you go to the slide with the assignment and the, oh, yeah. um, yeah. oh yeah, um, I don't, I could just, do you want to describe this just real quickly for folks? This is just this Walter Murch, this sound, uh, film sound designer talking about how he made the sound of motorcycles. There was two different motorcycles in this film and one was like the sound of a motorcycle and he's like well I have to you have to be able to tell like who's a good guy who's a bad guy and the second motorcycle was the sound of women screaming um and he like just distorted the microphone as it was recording so being like being creative asking people for help he also was like I had no idea what to do my friend just said you know I wanted to scream so here we are so we wanted to we'll leave this we'll leave this for you. Um, and I give this assignment out a lot, um, like kind of like sound scavenger hunt and a way to think about the sonic world that you live in already and um, recording, rec and then I think you, was there a writing part portion of this? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah if you're like oh where do i start oh this is overwhelming oh blah blah <laughs> try this out um give yourself an afternoon call up on your audio friends or just do it yourself and play it for your kid or your partner or your cat like it doesn't matter um yeah. go ahead yeah, i just want to add like pick one thing like cereal and how can you make cereal sound so many different ways like instead of being like oh my god there's so many options like pick one thing and do make it sound. Yeah. 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 Yay. I mean, that's what we have for y'all. Um, if there's any, you know, questions, thoughts, um, all the things, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So something we'll, we'll talk about later is um, as part of this conference, we're starting like a listserv for like Rhode Island sound makers but if you're outside of Rhode Island you can join it you'll get an email if you've registered for the conference and and part of this we, we want to just uh, en enable a times to like check back in and and talk about these projects so even if you're making this for for no one right now if like you you make something you want to share uh, later there'll be there'll be ears for you cool. um, but thank you so much uh, Mara and Ari that that was really incredible and I loved to just like being exposed to so many different soundscapes there um, is there any way people can like find you or find find your work? Maybe we could. We... Yeah, I'll drop I'll drop my website in the chat, um, and you can please reach out if you'd like. Uh... <laughs>